Thanksgiving is a wonderful time for us to share in many things that bless and gift our lives. The gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of abundant and delicious food. But that time with family also sometimes comes with a little bit of drama, right? And sometimes comes with a little bit of conflict. It's not always just happy, happy, happy time. But it is a moment that we have ritually within our national life <clears throat> that invites us, calls us, challenges us to be thankful. El día de acción de gracias nos ofrece el momento para reflexionar sobre, sobre las razones por las cuales debemos estar agradecidos con la vida y con Dios. But it's not always easy to be thankful. Como acabo de compartir, hay momentos, circunstancias en la vida, episodios en nuestra trayectoria de, de la vida que, que a veces crean y hacen muy difícil estar agradecidos. So I want to start out today by remembering one of those times in our own lives. I shared one of mine. And remember, this is kind of our evangelism practice, right? We're learning how to tell our story. And there are a lot of people out there who you're going to encounter who will be at one point or another in their lives down in the black box, unable to be thankful. And it's important to learn how to tell your story of when you were that way so that they don't think you're coming in as somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. So, les invito a compartir con su vecina o su vecino un momento en su vida cuando le fue difícil estar agradecido. Le fue difícil sentir agradecimiento. So, take a few moments and share with your neighbor some moment when you had a hard time being thankful. All right, dos minutos. Andale. <laughs> Paul, who wrote the words we read today, was no stranger to hardship either. He wasn't writing these words about being thankful and about rejoicing always from a happy place. He was in prison. Estaba encarcelado, Pablo, cuando escribió estas palabras 
enfatizando el valor de regocijar en todas circunstancias y de buscar vivir agradecidos con Dios. So, I want to share today a few suggestions, pieces of wisdom, both from the Apostle Paul and from others who have discovered similarly that it's possible to cultivate gratitude even in the middle of the black box, even when we are in the hard times of life. The first piece of guidance I would simply describe this way. Look for the good, not for the bad. Busca lo bueno y no lo malo. He says, whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, put your mind on those things. Ponga su mente en las cosas buenas. Porque cuando ponemos la mente en las cosas malas o desagradables o limitadas o problemáticas, comienzan a aumentarse. Pero cuando ponemos el enfoque en lo que es bueno, delicioso, bonito, alegre, excelente, entonces esas cosas comienzan a abundar. So that first piece of guidance is fairly simple, but not always easy to practice. I listened to a TED talk by a woman named Haley Bartholomew, who described her experience of having gone into a deep depression. For apparently no reason, she had a husband, two wonderful kids, a job, but she just was not happy in her life. She just was not happy. And she got less and less happy as the days went on. And she sought some help. A friend told her about a nun who had been a spiritual director for her. And so she went to see this nun. And the nun gave her a very simple piece of advice. She said, the, the key to happiness is to be reflective and grateful about your life. La llave, el grano, el detalle importante es reflexionar y estar agradecido por los detalles de tu vida. And she invited her each day before she went to bed to sit and simply go over the day and pick one thing, one thing that happened that she was thankful for. And so she began this very simple daily practice of looking for one thing that she was thankful for. Well, she was a photographer as well. And so she began to use the language of photography to capture the one thing. Comenzó a tomar fotos de la, la cosa que provocó agradecimiento en su vida. Y lo hizo por un año entero, 365 photos over the course of a year of things that made her thankful. And what she discovered as she collected these photos on a wall is that the level of her happiness began to grow. That she began to discover just how much she had to live for. Just how much she had to be happy about. Y cambió toda su perspectiva, mirando diariamente una cosa por la cual podría estar agradecida. But she says, there's one other thing that she learned that was really important. She learned that a big source of her unhappiness was the expectation she had of other people in her life, which kept her from being able to see the good, especially with her husband. Tenía expectativas de su esposo, de su marido, que, que fuera más romántico, que traía flores, que hablaba palabras bonitas o que expresaba poesías. Tenía expectativas que él no cumplía. Y por no cumplirlos, ella estaba muy deprimida y muy disgustada con quién era. 
Pero cuando inició esta nueva práctica, comenzó a ver cosas que antes no veía. She began to see in her husband qualities and traits and behaviors and actions that were clearly deeply full of love for her that she had been invisible, that had been invisible to her because her expectations of him had created this curtain that fell down between her and him in, in not enabling her to see clearly the gifts he was giving. The way he always gave her the biggest piece of pie. The way he always served her first when it was time for dinner. The way he always opened the door for her when they went somewhere. Simple things that she came to see for the first time and give thanks for. So the first lesson, the first piece of wisdom, la primera lección en cómo procurar una vida más feliz y agradecida es buscar lo bueno y no lo malo. La segunda es la, el cultivo de una disciplina de gratitud y agradecimiento. Cultivar una disciplina de gratitud y agradecimiento. El apóstol Pablo dice, yo he aprendido el secreto de vivir con mucha comida y con hambre, con plenitud y con escasez. The apostle Paul discovered the secret of contentment. No matter what his physical circumstances were, whether he had a table full of food or nothing at all, whether he had lots of resources to draw upon or very few. Somehow, in his encounter with the living God and with Jesus, his son, Paul discovered the secret of contentment. To be able to be content to rejoice and to be thankful even in a prison cell. Descubrió cómo vivir contento con quien era y con lo que tenía. <laughs> Había tocado el fuente de todo. Y encontrando el fuente de todo en Jesús, descubrió una abundancia interminable. Infinita. The practice of saying thank you, of simply being grateful for very simple things that come from other people or from God. To walk into a blue sky, crisp, cool, sunny day and to say, thank you God, what a gorgeous day. To sit at a table where you have food to eat and to bow your head and say, thank you, God, for what I have in front of me today, that I have food to eat. To look at your children who may be squabbling and squawking and crying and say, thank you, God, I have a family. To receive a phone call from a friend that you didn't anticipate and to say, thank you for thinking about me. What happens as we do that, as we make it our practice, our discipline, is that we discover a humility before life that recognizes that there is good flowing to me all the time that I can either ignore or deny or accept and welcome with gratitude. An attitude of gratitude, una actitud de gratitud, se cultiva en la vida. No aparece de repente. Es una práctica, una disciplina que vamos cultivando poco a poco. Y esa actitud desarrolla un espíritu de abundancia para nosotros. The Apostle Paul says, I have learned the secret to contentment. 
Y nosotros también podemos aprenderlo. The third piece of wisdom that can help us out of the black box if we find ourselves there is to serve someone else besides ourselves. Es sacar de nosotros, salirnos de nosotros mismos para servir a otra persona. Leti called attention to the opportunity Margie shared for us during Christmas not to just be all wrapped up in what we're going to get ourselves and the people that are our own, but, but to, to think about giving to somebody else beyond ourselves. No? Servir a otro. There was a documentary that was done a number of years ago called The Happy Film, and I recommend it to you. You can look it up online and you can watch it on your computer. Uh, it's just called The Happy Film. And it was a, a filmmaker who set out to figure out what makes people happy. And he discovered a number of different things, but one of the fundamental things that he discovered is that what makes many, many, many people deeply happy is not paying attention to their own stuff but to serving other people. That when we get out of our own heads and out of our own needs and we offer ourselves in service to another, there is a gift of joy and gratitude that wells up within us that is unstoppable. That is unstoppable. And that can pull us out of our own black holes. So, pay attention to the good and not the bad. Cultiva una disciplina de dar gracias a las cosas más pequeñas en la vida. Y buscar oportunidades para servir a otros. Look for opportunities to serve other people. And I'll bet you, if you do those three things, if you're in your black hole and you do those three things, I bet you, you will find yourself not very far from then in a much happier and thankful place. Oremos. Let's pray. Señor, queremos ser un pueblo agradecido. Queremos ser un pueblo con una actitud de gratitud fundada, sentada, sembrada y fructífera en nuestras vidas. Pero necesitamos de tu gracia para poder iniciar este camino. Ayúdanos a buscar lo mejor. Ayúdanos a salir de nosotros mismos para bendecir a otra persona. Ayúdanos a cultivar la disciplina de gratitud. Hoy, mañana y todos los días que tenemos. Por Cristo te lo pedimos. Amén.